If you're new to Solana and looking to optimize or get the best out of your trades, this guide is for you. I'll show you quick tips and tricks for buying and selling crypto on the Jupyter Exchange through Phantom Wallet. Now we're focusing on mobile for now, which is available on both iOS and Android, but the steps on desktop are pretty much the same. So let's get right into it. If you haven't already, download and set up Phantom from the App Store or Google Play. We have a guide on that as well if you need help with that. So open the app, down on the nav bar, you'll see Phantom has a built-in swap feature, which works fine for basic token swaps on Solana, but charges slightly higher fees. Now, while the difference is pretty negligible for small trades, we wanna go a bit further and show you how to access extra features like limit orders, recurring swaps, better swap rates, and more flexibility overall with Jupyter, which is the top decentralized exchange on Solana. It's an aggregate meaning it'll check all the different swap routes and pick the best one for your trade without the phantom wallet fee slapped on. So to start using it, go to the explore page where you can browse Solana dApps, search for Jupyter, then tap open. The next step is to connect your wallet. Tap the connect button, then view more wallets and select Phantom from the list. Approve the access prompt and you're in. By default, you'll land on the spot page with three main modes at the top, instant, trigger, and recurring. Instant is the most straightforward. It lets you swap one token for another at the best available rate right now. You'll see two boxes, one for the token that you're selling and one for the token that you're buying. Tap either to open open the token list and make your pick. But if you're trading something less common, it's safer to use the token address instead of just searching by name because they're often lookalikes and it's easy to pick the wrong one by mistake. So to avoid that, use a free tool like Gecko Terminal, search for the token there, confirm the details and copy the token address, then just paste it into Jupyter's search bar and if it's valid, it'll show up right away. After selecting tokens, the next step is deciding how you want the trade to go through. When you tap the toggle at the top, you'll see two Two modes, ultra and manual. Ultra mode is the easier option since it basically handles everything for you. Slippage, network fees, even priority settings during congestion. It adjusts values based on current conditions to give your trade the best chance of going through. If you're looking for simplicity, just stick to ultra mode and you're all set. If you switch to manual mode, you'll get more control over the trade with some advanced settings. You can customize your slippage tolerance, which is basically the wiggle room you're giving the trade in case the price changes slightly while your transaction is being processed. A lower number means you're strict about the price, but it also means the trade could fail if the price moves too much. A higher number increases the chances your trade will go through, but you might pay more than expected. There are some other options like broadcast mode, fee type, etc. But if you're just starting out, just leave them as they are. The default settings already work well out of the box, so you can explore these in your own time. All right, let's switch over to the second tab, Trigger. This is where you can set a limit order. Choose the price you want, and Jupiter will automatically make the trade once the market reaches it. At the top, you'll see two options. You can toggle between Ultra and Exact. These control how strict the trade should be. If you leave it on Ultra, Ultra, Jupiter will give your order a bit of wiggle room, so even if the prices are moving around, it'll still try to get the trade through. But if you flip it to exact, you're saying, only swap if I get this exact amount, no slippage at all. Now that sounds great in theory, but in volatile markets, it means your trade might not go through. Okay, once that's picked, go ahead and choose what token you wanna sell and what you wanna buy. Under that, there's the sell at rate field. This is where you enter the price you want the trade to happen at. So if you're waiting to sell your soul at $180, just type it in here. The order will only go through if the market hits that price. Next is expiry. This just decides how long the order should stay open. You can leave it on never if you want it to stay active indefinitely or set it to expire after a few hours, days, or weeks. And finally, at the bottom, you'll see a summary of everything, how much you're selling, what you'll get, the trigger price, and the platform fee that'll be applied once the trade is executed. 
All right. Now let's look at the recurring tab. This feature is great. If you want to automatically buy a token on a regular schedule instead of all at once. It's similar to dollar cost averaging, where you spread your buys over time, no matter what the market's doing. At the top, you'll see two options, time and price. So let's start with time, which is the more common approach. Say you've got 5,000 USDC and you want to gradually convert it into SOL over the next year. You'd start by choosing USDC under I want to allocate, then enter 5,000 as your total budget under to buy, pick soul. Now set your schedule, choose one week in the every dropdown and 52 orders in the over field. That tells Jupiter to run the swap once per week for a full year. If you want, you can also set a price range here. For example, only buy if Seoul is between $100 and $150. Scroll down and you'll see a summary that updates with your plan. Now let's flip over to the price mode, which uses something called value averaging or VA for short. Say you still wanna convert the 5,000 USDC into Seoul over time, but instead of buying the same dollar amount every week, you want your portfolio to grow in value by the same amount each time, like $100 per week. That's the idea behind value averaging. If Seoul is priced low this week and your portfolio is under the $100 growth target, Jupiter will buy more Seoul to catch up. But if Seoul pumps and your holdings already gain value, it'll buy less or maybe even nothing that week. And this is different from DCA where you just buy $100 of Seoul each week no matter what. With VA, the system buys more when prices are low and less when prices are high helping you avoid overpaying during pumps and accumulate more when the market dips. Now, since this video is meant to be beginner friendly, we won't go into the more advanced features Jupiter offers like perps, which let you trade with leverage or the pro tab where you can explore deeper market stats, token flows and charts. But now that you've seen how everything works on the spot site, you're all set to make your first trade on Solana using Jupiter. Now we'd love to hear how it goes for you. So share your experience in the comments below. Bye.